you are, or you can't recreate yourself in the next grandest version of that because you, you've got no vision that you're holding. So I'm always saying to students, first you must hold a vision of who you really are. And I want to encourage you, it could be any vision you want, I mean, there are no limits here, but I want to encourage you to have your vision have nothing to do with cars or houses, perfect partners or certain income levels or any, <laughs> any of those things that we are all clear don't matter. But here's the irony of it, by the way. Here's the irony of it in case you feel you have to eschew those things, step aside from them and uh, abandon those once held wishes. When we move into the next grandest version of who we really are, that is when we shift the whole of our life priorities away from those things I've been talking about, houses, cars, wages, power, fame, fortune, all that stuff. When we shift our focus away from that to this real reason for being on the earth, interestingly enough, all that stuff that we thought we were wanting so badly that we thought was going to bring us that lasting happiness, all that stuff comes falling down on us without effort. I, I can tell you that from my own life. I went from living on the street, from not having two nickels to rub together, and that wasn't a turn of phrase, that wasn't a figure of speech, that was my literal truth. I did not have two nickels in many of those moments to rub together. And I went from that to a place where all the things I've ever wanted in life fell down on me and were produced in my environment, in my reality, without effort. Someone far more eloquent than I put this particular formula in a nicely worded phrase. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all else will be added unto you. So don't go around asking, what are we to eat? What are we to drink? Wherewithal will we clothe ourselves? Each day has problems of its own. We're making it all up. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That is the experience of who you really are. And all else will be added unto you now. How to stay on track with the purpose of life. The four fundamental questions of life. Is the tool that I want to give to you, that I want to share with you, that will help you to stay on track, to stay close to what we're talking about here. So let's look quickly at this powerful tool, the four fundamental questions of life. Each day, I want you to ask yourself these four questions. Get out a lipstick or a piece of a bar of soap, you know, and write on the mirror of your vanity or where you do your shaving, whatever, the, the bathroom mirror. Write these four questions. Number one, who am I? Number two, where am I? Number three, why am I where I am? And number four, what can I do about that? What do I intend to do about that? And I want you to ask yourself these questions as often as you can. I suggest that at the beginning of this process, people do this every day. Sometimes every hour of every day. Wouldn't it be interesting if you had these four questions on a small piece of paper in your pocket or in your handbag or someplace where you could get to them quickly 
and you could ask yourself these questions, remind yourself of your answers to these questions, which, by the way, will change from day to day and from time to time, unless they do not. But wouldn't it be interesting if you had these questions in front of you and you could ask yourself and answer these questions at any time that you wish? Because I'm telling you that if you stay in touch with your answers to these questions, you'll stay on track and that purpose of life that we talked about a minute ago will become part of your daily and your moment to moment experience. So the four questions again that you ask yourself as often as you can, particularly at the beginning, who, who am I? Where am I? Why am I where I am? Why am I in this place? And what do I intend to do about that? Now, before we close this lesson, I want to give you this assignment. This is your homework assignment for next week. Take out the spiral notebook or your little you know, course notebook that you got last week and, and write out your answers to these questions. First, write the questions one on each page and give yourself plenty of room and then write out your answers. The answers that you give to these questions right now, they may be, those answers might be different tomorrow or next week or next month, but your answers right now. Now I'm going to give you my answers, but I want to be real clear here. There are no right or wrong answers to these questions. See, it, there's no incorrect way to answer the questions, but while there are no right or wrong answers to the questions, you must ask the questions. These questions will f bring you freedom and give you the tools with which to step into the true purpose of life so that you might then have what you thought you wanted but now know really don't, that doesn't make any difference. Those things don't make any difference. And those things will come falling in on you without effort. All these things that we are in this exploration stage, step two of the process of how to live as God. All of these things we're talking about, you will learn how to, and you'll explore how to experience these things in your life without efforting for them by asking these four questions. Here are my answers, and we'll see how they, how they line up with yours, and, and they don't have to be even close to yours, but here are my answers. Wh who am I? I ask myself, who am I? I am an individuation of divinity. I am in fact a singularization of the singularity. I am in fact that which God is. I am a divine manifestation of divinity itself. That's who I am. I know I don't sometimes act like that. I know it doesn't sometimes feel that way to me, but that doesn't make it not true. It simply makes it not experienced in that moment by me. But there are moments when I do experience that, and perhaps in your life as well. You've had those wonderful moments when you've just been with yourself and thought, wow, this is who I am. I am that. So that's my answer. Who am I? I am that which is divine, experienced in physical form. Where am I? I am, in fact, in physical form. I am in what I call the physical realm, the realm of physicality, as opposed to the realm of spirituality. And that's where I am. There are three realms that I am aware of in God's kingdom. The realm of the spiritual, the realm of the physical, and the realm of pure being, which is neither physical nor spiritual in particular, but is, in fact, all of it. Ultimately, when we're in the realm of pure being, we realize that there is no, no difference between spirituality and physicality, that it's really all one. Even though we're not physical in the sense that you and I call physical, there is nothing, God said to me, that is not physical in some form, although it may be a form with which human beings are not particularly familiar. But physicality exists uh, in, in forms w that we cannot even imagine. So just because it's not visible does not mean it's not physical. Are you, are you clear about that? Just because it's not visible does not mean it's not physical. So, but we are right now in the visible, hmm? in the visible physical realm. That's where we are. Or what I call the realm of the relative, yes? Because the realm of the spiritual is the realm of the absolute. 
where things are absolutely what they are. That there is only love. Love is all there is. It's always here. It's always now. But we've gone from the realm of the physical into the realm of the... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We've gone from the realm of the spiritual into the realm of the physical. Because in this realm, things exist in relative terms. There is, in fact, up and down, left and right, here and now, before and after, big and small, male and female, created he, them. There is, in fact, a container that contains all that is in the universe. By the way, the universe is beyond enormous. So there's this physical container that contains every physical possibility, seen and unseen. Fair enough? Now the third question, why am I there? Why am I where I am? I am where I am because in the realm of the spiritual, I cannot experience what I know is true about me. See, here I know that I am God. And, I am, and that I am all that God is. But in order for me to experience that, I need to move out of the realm of the absolute into the realm of the relative so that I can experience allness in relative terms. So I am here. I have brought myself here. My soul, if you please, has journeyed here deliberately that I might know myself and experience myself in relative terms. I've come here to this world so that I could have, in fact, a world of experience. Now, what do I intend to do about that? Well, I intend to hold that world of experience in a new way. In a way that allows me to demonstrate to myself that I know what I'm doing here. That nothing is happening by accident. That there are no bad outcomes, that nothing, nothing bad can happen to me in the sense that, in the sense that everything that occurs and exists in the realm of the relative occurs and exists for my own benefit, that I might know and experience, express and become, declare and be who I really am in relationship to it.